to be quite frank, to be a business owner, there are going to be seasons of hustle that yeah. are that are hard, and that those things have to come before your family. I have not been as present of a mother as I wanted to be these last two or three months, but that is very short term for the bigger picture and how much more it's going to allow my family. And not only do I think that, but my husband and I communicate that together. So excited for today's special interview. You know, I'm always like scouring the internet for amazing stories to bring to you so you can have just inspiration and really like empowerment behind you going after your dreams. So today I'm bringing on Randa Caraba. Randa is the founder of Pow Her Fit, <laughs> which is a strength training community. She's a social media influencer, mom, and wife. She's more than inspiring because I learned this actually by watching her Instagram, okay? She's very successful today, but she was extremely successful back in the day as well and lost everything and was able to rebuild from ground zero. That takes grit, and we're going to learn how she did it. We're going to learn some of her marketing tips and how she manages it all. You know, being the influencer mom and wife, we met on Instagram and I've been just following along on her journey. Absolutely love the content that she puts out. And I was like, you have to come on Mommy Millionaire. So she's in Newport Beach with me today. Help me welcome Randa to the show. Hello, awesome. everybody. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here. Yes, I'm excited to be here. So I want to find out about Pow Her. Fit. <laughs> and I know <laughs> yes. you say power, but I want to just point that out. I love the play on words yes. that you have going on there. Mm -hmm. How did that start? Okay, well, it's kind of like what you hit on with my previous company. So I like killed it, kind of started like right at the beginning when Facebook, I remember turning my first business page into a page yeah. because I just had it as a profile before that. So I kind of <laughs> had that moment in those couple of years where I was like killing it. And I had a storefront from 2010 until 2000 shut at the first of 2017. So 2010 through 2015, I skyrocketed and I made the Aggie 100 number 11 fastest growing Aggie owned oh, wow. company in the world. I'm still the youngest female to date to do that. And then 2016 hit. We're in a college town. So there were some different things with like our football schedule, licensing and trademarking within like Aggie content. And I did a lot of like game day stuff. And then honestly, that was the year of like, Amazon really starting to take over. Like oh, people really yeah. starting to like trust online marketing. So my online was still killing it, but my storefront was just not. And so I had to do this big layoff of basically everybody except my office manager exactly a year before I got married. Mm. And I just had to kind of get in there from ground zero to keep everything afloat because my store had all these expenses to where this, the online had very minimal expenses. Mm -hmm. And I was like working my ass off to keep this afloat when I was like, okay, this just makes too much sense not to shut the storefront. But being honest, you know, like I come from a very middle class family. I had built it and was killing it, made a couple million dollars a year, you know. So dealing with, I think, a little bit of public perception on shutting a storefront, even yeah. though it was exactly what my business needed to do to be more profitable, made sense. But it was also the first time that I ever kind of got into therapy to dive into like my personality. I'm an Enneagram three. So like <laughs> it looking like I am failing is like cutting me to my core. Yeah. Right. So like whenever the sign was going down, people would and I owned it like I'm like, I'm getting married. I'm going online. Here I am at my store. Like I did not hide behind it whatsoever. When the sign started going down, people were literally texting me like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, we're not going out of business. We're just like redirecting, right? Mm -hmm. And so that next year I was profitable online. But what I learned is like, I didn't like running an online business, mm. like shipping, emailing, customer support. Like it's not, it's not an online business, just that. Like it's e more like, a, yes, e-commerce, yeah. e industrial distribu distribution. Like I liked to style women at like the peak of like their favorite events in my store and like retail had just changed. So yeah. like anyone that would come to me being like, what do I need to do to open a boutique? I'm like, well, first off, you need to understand it's not a boutique anymore. It is literally an ID business, mm. e online e-commerce. So that was such like a shift for me, if that makes sense. But with that, going through the layoff, I was just working and like not eating, which is oh, so unhealthy. Right. Like horrible for me as the owner of a fitness company right here to say I was like just not eating. I mean, yeah. my fiance at the time would literally call me like, Randa, have you eaten lunch? Just because I was running 3,400 square feet. 
basically by myself. Oh my gosh. And so, so stressed. Yeah, so stressed. Yeah. So then, and we're also building our first house. We're planning a wedding, like all of these things, right? And I remember I shut the store exactly a month before my wedding. And I shut the store, owned it, went on my bachelorette party, peace out for five days, let the town talk, whatever, I'll come back. Well, from my bachelorette party up until the wedding, I, for the first time in my life, didn't have to work at this brick and mortar store for 16 hours a day. So I was like, I had lost all this weight, but I almost like, you know, when people go on keto and they lose a lot of weight really fast and then they look like older and like there's no like. Yes, they have like, that. It's not the skinny fat, but it's yes, like, yeah. there's no shape to yes, them. Yes. That's what I looked like for the first time in my life because I was overweight. Like I tell everyone I hit my, my freshman 15 in high school and mm-hmm. then I hit it again in college and then I hit it again at 21 and 25. Like it just yeah. piled on. Right. So I, for the first time, was like the lightest I had ever been, but I had no shape. So I went to the gym every day before my wedding because I wanted to just have like some good curves, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. And I started feeling good. And honestly, I was sharing about it because I'd always been sharing everything with my business online. And it's the first time that I realized people were tying to me and my fitness journey far more than anything with my fashion or my boutique business. And I think it's because I wasn't just a fitness expert. I wasn't a fitness trainer. I wasn't, you know, so it was like, they got to see the behind the scenes, how it started. People love that. Yeah. And so Mm -hmm. I kept doing that. I got back from the honeymoon and I'm like, oh, I look my best. I want to keep going. I made my own little hashtag Grant's hot wifey for lifey. Cause I'm like, I'm going to stay as hot wife, right? Everyone like says you'll get married and let it go. So kind of just all that evolved. I started fitness influencing and I was working with a great company. It was just a little more like extreme and rigid on the nutrition side. So after nine months, I was like burnt out. Like I want to eat carbs every day. I don't want to be fasting during these interval cycles. Mm -hmm. But I was like scared. Like I don't know if I can eat whenever I want. I don't know if I can have high carb day every day. You didn't know you trusted yourself yet. Yeah, I didn't trust myself Mm -hmm. yet. And so I was like, I bet if I'm feeling like this, like other people are too. So that's kind of when I said, I'm going to step back. And I kind of told the internet, I don't know where I'm going with my business. And I was behind the scenes selling my retail business. And kind of putting together this fitness business, but I didn't know what it was quite yet. So it Were took a couple months. Were you primarily on Instagram at this time or Facebook? Mainly Instagram, but still Facebook too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So that's like a whole lot. But I lot. love that it came out of like almost like a necessity for you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So you help women like look and feel their best. I do. Now. And that's I do. like so cool. I yeah. Mean, I know. I felt like coming here, I'm like, Kayla literally creates millionaires, <laughs> which is like the ultimate job. I'm like, I like mine almost just as much. I'm not making them millionaires yet yeah. um, with my coaching program. I want to, but I am helping them to look and feel their best. And I also feel like I'm helping them to have that confidence. Even yes. if they aren't there yet, I'm really helping these women to embrace the now. Like, yes, you have these goals to get here, but hey, you've got a waistline for the first time. Let's let's show a little midriff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, I think that's interesting. Like once we start start to like shape up and we feel good in our bodies, it does like directly help us in our business. Why do you think that is? I mean, look good, feel good, do good, mm-hmm. operate good. I don't know. I just feel like as you're looking better, then you're more excited about life. Like I was even thinking that in the prep room coming here, I'm like, you know what? Like the thing about strength training as we get older, right? I feel like some people, once you re- reach a certain age, you think the best is behind you. But with strength training, I'm like, my best body is five years from now, 10 wow. years from now, 15 years from now. And that like excites me to know like the best is yet to come and it makes me want to get up and go. So not only do I want to lift the weights, but if I'm lifting the weights and I have the body, I want to wear the clothes and the bikini. (laughs) (laughs) I want to like do all the things. Yeah. Well, I think that's so true because I've gone through seasons in my life where I'm like not feeling confident about my body. Like when I was going through breast implant illness, like I barely worked out. My doctor was like, you can't even get on the treadmill and walk because like your adrenals are so burnt out. And that was like, I didn't want to go on camera. I'm like, oh, do I have to film this? Like, it really messed with me. So I love that you're in the business of helping people feel good. Absolutely, yes. Because then they can come over to Mommy Millionaire and I'll help them get rich. Yes, yes, I love it. (laughs) We'll tag team them. (laughs) So how has this community helped you? Oh, my gosh. So much. Like, the thing is, I I like getting emotional about it. Oh, my gosh. That's good. We love emotion on Mommy Millionaire. Um, Like, so many of the women, like, the, the stories they share with me yeah. are so raw and real. Mm-hmm. And I mean, sometimes I'm just like honored that they trust me with the things they tell me, if that yeah. makes sense. Even in black and white, I'm like, you don't know me. Like you, you know me, but you don't know me. Right. That makes sense. And I'm so glad that you do know me. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I know this is weird, but the stories they will share with me, the things they'll tell me 
are just so powerful on how their marriages have turned around, their sex lives has turned around, their, you know, the way that they feel about themselves, like their careers changing. I mean, I've been able to bless women with like big time money through our fitness challenges. Our winner this year of our $20,000 challenge, she was never a homeowner and she lived in a trailer home that was on family land and then the grandfather had passed away and there was some, you know, stuff going on with like where the trailer would go and she won this big money right at the time and it was right before interest rates peaked and she bought her home. It was like the down payment for her first home. Oh, so like going that. to surprise this woman, this woman and hugging her who had already lost over a hundred pounds, oh already gotten off of her diabetic medication, no longer needing the insulin on top of all that. Now it's like you get to become a, a homeowner for the oh, first time. Gosh, and that yeah. is just like powerful and impactful mm -hmm. and really just makes you want to keep going. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I think that sometimes like in business, we can get very wrapped up in the numbers and like, are you hitting your goal? But when like you have to get into this, like you have to know the stories of the people that you're working with, because that is the fuel Absolutely. that will keep you going on hard days. Yes, because I'm like, they think they're looking up to me online, but then also knowing that I've built this community where there's this double sided accountability. It's like, clearly, there's not every day that I feel my best or look my best or want to show up. Yeah. Every single day, right? We get tired, we get exhausted, we need different seasons of rest, but they equally are that same accountability for me. Oh, I love that. Same goes to the mommy millionaires. I show up for you guys. So there are a ton of women who are listening in right now that own an online business and they're like, I want to have her kind of success. And I promised that I would ask some tips for Absolutely. them. So what, what did you do? Like, are there practical, tangible things that mommy millionaires can take away and say, okay, if I do this in my marketing efforts, I can expect results like Randa. Right. Now, I clearly don't, don't know what every business owner of Mommy Millionaire does. I mean, we does. have so I mean, real estate agents, like fitness businesses, any type of business you can think of. They're, so they're what I at. think could kind of be the, the neutral ground to all of it is trust factor. Oh, that's good. Trust factor, because I feel like everyone is online these days. Everyone can put on this front for online or yep. put on their, their mask or their makeup or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And here's like their online personality versus like who they really are. And yes. like, even me, my online personality is more played up. Like it's more... Eclectic, you sure? if you will. Are right. you? But at the Are same sure? time, like everything I say and do is who I really am. Yeah. So I think that matters, like really portraying yourself as who you really are. That way you don't get kind of stuck in this like double edged sword. What if what if like I think that some mommy millionaires listening in right now, they've heard this advice before, right? Like be yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And people will say, well, what if I don't know who I am? Ooh, self-development work, girl. We got to go into therapy. <laughs> we do. It is not a yeah. bad thing. Like therapy is maintenance of life. Oh, Same. Like good. whenever I went in and was dealing with my store situation, I didn't know. You know, I was still so like defensive. Like I go into therapy and I'm like, what does the therapist think about me? Does she think I'm like good or like ill or like, and it, okay, if you're thinking that, you need to be there and you need to let go of that type stuff. So I didn't know what the Enneagram was. And I know the Enneagram ties into Christian values, which I know you are huge about. So it's like a personality trait graph based on that ties back to the Bible. So that's huge, kind of finding out your inner core. So if you have not read a book about the Enneagram or listened to a podcast about the Enneagram, you don't know what your number is, I would say that is huge. Oh, that's interesting. I think therapy is great because you're having people ask you hard questions that you can't avoid. Like, and even if you aren't ready to answer them right then for your therapist, it makes you like sit and think like, why do I do the things that I do? Or why am I fearful of the things that I am? So I think those things matter so good much. Good life coaches do that too. Yes. Good Bring life coaches up. make you self, just like <laughs> becoming self-aware and like really improving in your self-development, I think is huge, which marriage has been huge for me. Yeah. Like self-awareness 101. I'm like, when Get I married. got married, I, it was like someone's <laughs> holding a body mirror in front of me at all times. Yeah. That's so true. And I'm like, oh, God, I do that? Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea. Marriage thing. brings out, like, the best in you and the worst in you. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. that was all huge. But on top of, like, being yourself, I feel like I know not every industry would be, like, showcasing all of you. But for me, when I'm preaching to women about a sustainable lifestyle, like, I'm showing myself with no makeup on. I'm showing myself when I'm bloated. <laughs> I'm showing myself when... Mm -hmm. All the, I'm showing myself when I'm crying, when I'm struggling, when I'm at my peaks, when I'm not. And I yeah, think that's important. I think when you show more than the highlight reel or more than just the curation of how we want things to look, then people trust you so much. More. Yes. 
And I think it's important, like, if you're selling something online, you have to show a little more behind the scenes. If you're just a blogger selling other people's, like, clothes, you don't, you can make it look pretty all the right. time. Right, absolutely. But if you're selling your own product, people have to see that you're a real person, that you've gone through what they are might be experiencing right now to know, like, okay, her product, her service might work for me. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So build up the trust factor. Yes. What else did you do, like, in your marketing efforts to grow? I teamed up with a couple of my friends that were kind of aspiring influencers, if Ooh, you will. So collaboration, I, Collaborations ladies. with my girlfriends. So other friends that were working out, you know, it was like I would promote their business that they promoted mine while we were clearly friends. And obviously they were doing my program and I was using their products. Like it was true and genuine, but we really helped each other kind of like push and grow together. I love that. So that's kind of like pre-influencing, if you will. And then when PowerFit did launch, I do have an influencing program that started from the beginning. It was, is that like affiliate marketers? Yes. Okay. Yes. But they were, they're everyday women. They're not, I'm not going to say they're not, they are influencers, but they're not full-time content creators. Like their job is not content creation online. They are a teacher. They're a stay-at-home mom. They're the the woman in your Bible study. They're these like real attainable women that are doing it. And I felt like that was so much more of that trust factor because if someone was going to click on my page, I didn't want them just seeing bloggers or celebrity status women doing right. my program because then it's like, okay, they're popular. Right. Yeah, I wanted, you don't have the hope that that could be you. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to click on my stories ongoing all the time of all these different women. That's like, oh, she's working out at home with a toddler, literally using her toddler as her weight for her hip thrust. Like, yeah. I can do that type yeah. thing. Oh, I love that. So something I'm hearing from you is like collaboration over competition. 100%. Right. And you can't really get to the top of any business alone. No. You've got to bring people with you. 100%. And a lot of people have that mindset. I got to do it. I got to just keep pushing through. But yep. it's like, who are you working with? Like, yep. So uh, it wasn't even a year into my business. And I started out, I mean, I had one of the best trainers, four time over certified, all the things like, because I wasn't the quote unquote fitness professional when I started. Now I am, but I wasn't back then. And so at first it's like, oh my gosh, everyone wants me to open this fitness company but I'm not the fitness professional. So I kind of went along, I will have these professionals, I will live the lifestyle and people trust me living the lifestyle because I'm not just the fitness professional, mm -hmm. which evolved because then people wanted to talk to me about trainer type stuff, nutrition type stuff, and only me. So I did become certified. But leading up to that, I thought I needed like the best trainers, okay? So then, you know, nine, 10, 11 months into my program or my company, I'm noticing that people are not getting past the first four weeks of our 12 weeks programs. They're not completing them. Oh. Like the amount of women who are starting in week one and two versus finishing in week 11 and 12, it was drastic. So I'm at this point of, I'm not yet a year old. I'm still like new and cool online. You know, I feel like when you're new, people are watching you like, is she gonna succeed? Is yeah. she not? Like this is still new. And so I'm like, I have to reevaluate. How am I going to help women? actually make it through these programs. Mm -hmm. So so the, she took data, you guys. That's a very important point right there. Okay? Yes. Yeah. I, you, I literally was looking at the analytics of mm -hmm. each of my programs, like who's logging on, who's how long are they staying? You know, not only are they not finishing the people who are finishing, how much time are they spending in there versus Good. time that they spend on week one. And I stepped back and I was like, you know what? I think women need other women to cheer them on. Yes. And I think as PowerFit grows into this big community, we need to keep and hold on to these small communities because there are women who want these safe small communities where they wanna talk about vulnerable situations that they don't even wanna talk about to their sister-in-law or their mother-in-law mm -hmm. or their friend from mm -hmm. forever that they love and adore, but maybe they don't it's quite understand. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Or they're not on the same journey type thing. And so I was like, we're going to have empowerment coaches. And they do not have to be certified trainers or nutritionists. Some of them are. Some of them, once they become coaches with us, then aspire to be and do become that. But it's not requirement. I wanted it to not be so nerve-wracking working with a, a trainer right. or someone that's such a professional. Well, you feel like you have to be perfect with your trainer. Right. Like, you can't yes. tell them, oh, my God, I, like, didn't show up for three days and I ate hot dogs with mustard right. and ketchup on Right. You're so on. shamed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was like, I want these everyday women who have showed to be successful as my affiliates to then level up into becoming coaches where they then make more money as a side job where basically they're leading these small communities and helping these women actually show up for themselves. Not only for themselves, then they're creating these relationships in this small group. Because the best way I can say it is like, if you show up to, you're trying out a new church and you go sit like in the back row on the very corner and this church is not your vibe, you can just jump right out and leave and no one's gonna <laughs> yeah. know, right? 
But if you're like going up with all your girlfriends to this new church and you're locking arms and you're all sitting in the front row, well, leaving is a (laughs) (laughs) little. You're in it for the sermon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the way I correlated it. I was like, I want these women who have these online relationships where, you know, they may only see each other once a year at our PowerFit meetup or they may not even know each other Mm -hmm. for a year or two years until they meet each other. But they feel safe and secure asking for product recommendations or medicine that they've been trying or different things like that. Like it's it's not a doctor. It's not a professional. It's just a small, safe group with a coach who has proven to be successful in creating these relationships amongst her other members. Oh, my goodness. So good. So empowerment coaches. Mommy Millionaire used to have something similar. We had Mommy Millionaire coaches. But, Uh I mean, I think people love to have that high access Mm -hmm. to the accountability. I agree. Mm -hmm. And they'll show up for them. Yes. And the same thing, kind of like when you were asking me, what do I get from the community? So many of my coaches just... They then thrive so much more in other aspects of their life, too, Mm -hmm. because them showing up for their groups and what it does for them as a person is just unmatched. Yeah, because then they're like they want to be above reproach because they're leading people, essentially. So good. Okay, so that seems like a needle moving decision. Like in Mommy Millionaire, I always talk about how you want to major in the minor things. Mm -hmm. And you were very consistent online. Mm -hmm. You showed up. You built that trust factor. And those are minor things Mm -hmm. like people would go, oh, I could, you know not do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you could not do that and not have a business eventually. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But that helped make you successful. And then there are those moments in your business where they're needle moving. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I look back and that's when everything changed. Would you say bringing in empowerment coaches was that moment? Oh my gosh, 100% because the trainer at the time did not understand my vision. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to put it on a gender thing, but he was a man. And I just don't think that I could make him understand how a woman wanted to speak to another woman on this empowerment coach level. And moreover, that bringing on these empowerment coaches didn't take away from the trainer at yeah, all. It's like a it, different. It's yes, a different, when, the tide yeah. high, when the tide is high, we're all going to rise. So it's only going to help. But it really exposed to me like that someone was not in line with where I was with this Ooh, company. Uh-huh. So not only am I now losing my main trainer, now he's upset. So we're going... I don't go public with it online, but someone else does. And then I've got these new coaches who aren't certified. You know, some I think when we first started our coaching program, we had one that was a certified trainer. And so I'm saying, no, I am moving forward with this fitness company of these coaches. And I'm placing my members in the, in the hands of these coaches that are just everyday women. Mm. Big. You talk about laying down at night like, God, am I doing the right decision? Give me some signs. I need to know. <laughs> yes. Okay. But that's a struggle right there. Mm-hmm. So was it public drama? It was a couple months after, and um, he did come out with some some things. You know, it didn't really turn into drama okay, because good. I kind of just squashed it, and I gave it no light until now. Now I guess people oh, are going to yeah. be like, oh, my but, God, well, what happened? Yeah, I Giving know. a little tea. <laughs> it's because you're in the studio. <laughs> but it's like if I want to tell other people who are struggling in their business, I clearly have to, again, practice what I pre- preach and be very vulnerable about things for that trust factor to say, yeah. That was hard. It's not always easy. Yeah, getting blasted online from someone who used to work for you that, yeah, we just kind of parted ways in a very professional manner that, you know, then maybe got upset that it was working. It sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I still valued him as a a trainer. Wonderful at his job. 100%. But these coaches, there was just something. You knew that was God in you. Like, just like going like, this is the path forward. And, I mean, just the the coaches energy in their groups like you cannot recreate or coach energy if that makes sense Mm -hmm. I mean I think it can get better yeah but if you're someone who doesn't believe that someone who's not a certified personal trainer can help someone reach their goals then I'm not going to teach you that (sighs) yeah well it's all perspective you can't you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink 100 percent. and if they don't want to try to move forward you're that's why you're the ceo you're the vision caster not everybody's going to always get it i've been there before with mommy millionaire too and I love that you said you didn't bring any light to the situation until now. <laughs> no. But it's happening for It's a been reason. years later. So yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's hard not going to stir up anything. But I think people give too much attention mm-hmm. to those things that could, you know, steal their energy, steal their shine. What were some things going on in your mind to make you go, oh, no, bye. We're going to squash Well, that. okay, so that's the first ever time I've been publicly blasted online since then, girl. So dang normal. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, it'll be gone in 24 hours, honey. Right? But that first time, I'll, I will say, it happened an hour before the life support was pulled on my aunt. Aww. And so, you know, that really then puts it in perspective yes. of like, this doesn't matter. Yep. This doesn't matter. People can talk. People can try to figure it out. And that was 
maybe a blessing in disguise that it happened at the same time, even though it was so hard. Yeah. It was also just days before my first ever PowerFit meetup. I was five months pregnant, and the manager at the gym told me the day before there, there was an anonymous call of someone trying to get my meetup canceled because I was not a certified personal trainer. Oh. And I wasn't. I was very open with the fact that when I opened this company, I was not. Well, the manager at the gym was going to be in the room with us, and she was four-time over-certified and was going to be watching everything. So we always had the certification behind us. Still always do. We have a dietitian. We have three trainers on staff, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. always been there. But it was like people were trying to find a dig anywhere they could. And so, yeah, that first time, it was a lot because I was losing my aunt. I was pregnant. It was my first ever meetup. And you know what happened is that first ever meetup, I did not plan to talk about it with my members at all. But this came out two or three days before our first meetup. So by the end of our meetup and us all being together, I was like, I have to address the, the elephant in the room. Mm. Like, I just have to. And let me tell you, me addressing that elephant in the room opened up so many vulnerable stories, not just from me to them, but them to each other mm -hmm. that... Honestly, thank you for blasting me online because it created something hard but beautiful from it, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And so now anytime I've been blasted, I just kind of turn my head away for 24 hours and it'll be gone. Mm, I love that. Perspective is everything. Yep. And it's like one of the most powerful things. It really own. is. And the thing is, there's so much media going on all the time that you can literally block it out. Just, yeah, just don't look. Don't look. Yep. Don't, don't look. Turn, turn your head to the side. <laughs> Shut down that app. Oh. Okay, so everybody puts out offers in their online business to get more customers, right? Right. And, you know, if I always teach about irresistible offers. Like, what is the thing that you're putting out that people cannot stop thinking about that they need to go open up their app and buy from you? Honestly, I think it's when we do our big challenges, especially Ooh. the New Year challenge. Because this year, I'm not going to say how much it is, but it's more than $20,000. And the thing is, we make it a six-year I mean, not six year, Gosh, six, dang, six year, six month thing. So it's truly like a lifestyle change. So I think when there's that much energy of like, this is life changing money to somebody. Mm -hmm. This is, this is well, more that's than why a, the biggest loser. Yeah. 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 And so I would say it's that. Absolutely. So let the, the psychology of challenges are you're creating that FOMO. People mm -hmm. have to get in at a certain time mm -hmm. or they're going to miss out mm -hmm. and there's a reward. Yes. And it's just like, that's human psychology. If we know there's a possible reward at the end of this, not just the weight loss, right. but like potential money that's going to increase my status, increase my lifestyle. Like I'm going to pay attention. Absolutely. That's genius. Yeah. So we, we launch it out in November, actually, like kind of around like Thanksgiving week with everything. We say how big it's going to be. We launch tickets for it leading up to... January 1st, and then they can enter January 1st through the 10th. But there's all these, exactly what you're talking about. Like, oh my gosh, I'm missing out, but like, I got to get in now. I see you doing it with your app too. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a genius at creating urgency. You're like, oh, I'm doing it about being here, girl. Oh, you are? I'm not telling anybody why I'm in the OC and they're all trying to figure out. They're like, are y'all buying like a property? Are y'all going on some reality TV show? Like what's going on? And I'm about to be like mommy millionaire. <laughs> so, okay. Let's talk about that. Like how... How did you get that marketing mind to b have that build up? Well, people? I don't know. I am such a content creator. I mm -hmm. feel like just at heart. Like if I'm spending time on social media, I still, and I know we're going to dive into this, I'm still completely organic. At this time in my life, a month from launching my fitness app that's been completely built up from the ground up over a year, which is a very big and expensive project, <laughs> yeah. much more than I even realized have not paid for any social media advertising. So when you don't pay for it, you have to really figure out how to make people pay attention and keep watching and click and learn. Mm -hmm. So I think of like just normal human things, like curiosity kills the cat. Mm -hmm. It just does. So then I knew this past week, like, okay, I'm getting ready to go to the OC. So with that, I'm trying to like wrap everything up at work. I'm not like camera ready. So I'm like, I'm just going to play on why I'm going to the OC. Does anyone want to guess what I'm doing in Newport Beach? Can y'all guess? And then I literally have friends texting me like, what the hell are you doing <laughs> in Orange County? <laughs> and I'm like, it's working. <laughs> That's so genius. But I mean, there's so much thought that goes yes. behind it. And that's what I want to point out. A lot of people think that they could just do what, what you're doing online. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to do it like Randa does it. And then it comes off inauthentic and people won't follow along. But if you just take some time and say, okay, what is it that people will, will right. keep people coming back? Like right. if I'm not showing up on their algorithm, mm -hmm. what's going to make them search my name? And it's also like, like a weekly goals type thing. It's like from the beginning, okay, what all is getting posted this week? What all are we really focusing on this week? Mm -hmm. And like I said, that was kind of like last week was kind of like my hell week on getting everything wrapped up with the app creation and trying to get planned to be here. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're just going to spin on 
something that's very curiosity driven. <laughs> okay, and if you guys are listening in to the podcast right now, you need to go open up your YouTube, search Mommy Millionaire, <laughs> Randa, and see what she has on today, you guys. She came prepared, okay? She looks cute. <laughs> so I feel like in Power Fit, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on there. I mean, a that lot. we haven't even dived into yet. Yes. But what keeps you like able to balance i hate mm -hmm. the word balance right okay i want to throw it in the trash but you'll know what i mean yeah. like how do you have this two-year-old son mm -hmm. that you throw extravagant parties like you guys have to follow her <laughs> because it's so cute what she does but like you are all out as a mom like mm -hmm. you are such an incredible mom and you like love your husband you can mm -hmm. tell like it's not mm -hmm. just fake you mm -hmm. know because i feel like there's fakers out there uh -huh. too you're for real mm -hmm. and then you have this incredible business you're also a Revolve partner, too. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. what I saw? So, yes. I mean, you've got a lot going on. Right. How in the heck do you do it all? You know, it was crazy as I was listening to one of your recent episodes, and it was about how it takes 17 minutes to focus in on a task. And uh -huh. multitasking is like the basically like a train wreck type thing. And I was like, you know what? That is so me. Like, it's crazy. You would think I'm going to come on here and say I'm a multitasker, but I am not. Oh, wow. Like, I am a one thing gets my attention at the time, and it gets all of me. Wow. Like, if it is my son time, I am in his world, and the rest of the world doesn't even Aww. exist. If I am, and poor my, my poor husband right now gets much less time of that than we used to, but it's I really give my all where I am, and I don't try to multitask. I'm the first person to sit here and say I'm not like a superwoman. I don't swim underwater. I'm not like a just keep trucking when there's a lot. When that happens, I go into shutdown mode and I can do one thing at a time yeah. and one thing really well. So one, I love that you own that. I 100%. Yeah. I recently went to this women speaking thing and I was on the panel and another woman was saying, kind of like got, got asked the same question and she's like, you just have to swim underwater. And I'm sitting there Why going, live like that? I'm like, number one, I can't hold my breath without like <laughs> holding my nose. So I'm going to be paddling with one arm. So <laughs> I'm already down for the count. <laughs> I and I'm like, that. no, you don't have to. I think it really, you know, I know you are such a huge Christian. Like, there's just this peace knowing, like, everything is getting done the way it needs to be done in the right time. God has got me. Mm -hmm. I show up for my best wherever that is. S scheduling, I will say I'm a huge scheduler. Yeah, like, good. here's my podcast time or here is my time to be creating content. Here's my time to be filming new workouts for the app. Here's my time to be checking in with my empowerment coaches. Here's my time. Like, whatever it is that gets my time and I schedule accordingly and I stick to that schedule, which some people can love and hate about me because it's like, then my dad will be like, hey, I'm dropping into town. And I'm like, are you on my calendar? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which but that's boundaries it, because I that's how to. you get where you are. And people could talk badly about right. that, but they're probably not where right. you are. <laughs> and at first it kind of comes off like, oh, my gosh, I can't even just stop by to like see my daughter type thing. But then once you kind of break it down, like, hey, this is just because I work from home doesn't mean I'm like accessible or everyone can just stop right. by my house and see me at all times. Right. So it kind of sets up that just like is you that said. a Texan thing? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone waves when you drive by and just like knocks on the front door. And so I get that. Now it's like, hey, let me know at least a day or two in advance before you, you come here and we can schedule something. I'll schedule it on my lunch break or I'll make someone clear the calendar for an hour and I will then have that true time for you right. rather than just trying to like do two things at once. So how do you deal with it when people, because I've dealt with that as, you know, with my family as well, like just mm -hmm. like issues, like with them having problems with my Getting boundaries, mm -hmm. right? And for me, I'm very like, I'm just a cut or dry person. You know, where I'm like, make me upset and like, my. That's like, it. it. It's because I have daddy issues. I'm very much like, I can easily cut people out. Uh -huh. So that's how I do it. It's not healthy. I need to go to therapy. But <laughs> <laughs> for normal people like you, I think a lot of women specifically, mm -hmm. like we weren't taught how to have boundaries and you're enforcing them. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And there's nobody looking over your shoulder. Hey, Randa, did you enforce that today? Did you right. follow through on that? Right. You do that because you know the results, yes. right? Right. But what would you say to that woman that's maybe struggling with putting boundaries into place with her family? I Number one, I feel like if you're struggling to put boundaries in place with your family, like that's not a bad thing because you care. You yes. know, like you're, you're empathetic. You don't want to be just setting this boundary. You love this person. And so I'm always like just a raw, honest conversation. If this is someone who is really going to get it that you don't want to hurt, they're going to hear you out and they're right. going to understand. So it took a sit down with my dad. It took a sit down. 
with my mom. Like, even before my son's first birthday party, second birthday party, you know, mom wants to come early and do all this. And I'm like, that's great. Come, let's do all of it. But an hour before the party starts, that's our social media content creation time. Because I don't want people that come to my son's birthday party to think they're being blasted on the internet. Like, I want that to be private and intimate and us to celebrate ourselves. But if we're doing this big over-the-top birthday party, we are going to do it. A content creation. I love type it. Thing yes, it. own it. Yep. So it is scheduled an hour before. Therefore, if you come early to the birthday party, totally fine. But that hour before, you're going to have to go into the media room and watch TV there or do something else because it is like Croy's time with mommy and daddy and the photographer that he's used to working with for content creation. That way it's not like, oh, now I have all these outside distractions, this or that. So I explain that to my mom to where then it's like, oh, that makes total sense versus waiting the day of just saying, hey, get out of the room. Right. If that, that would makes sense. That would hurt yes. the feelings. And she wouldn't understand. Right. But when I this break is it how down. We make money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When I'm like, hey, you know all those posts you see and all the the way this whole party's happening? Yeah, like this has to happen. It's part of the job and it's just one hour and then mm-hmm. all is well. So what I'm hearing is communication. Communication. Communication and don't always expect that person on the other side to accept it. Right. Or they may need a little more time. And also, I want to follow up. I think communicate only with the ones that actually truly That you want to create a yeah. relationship. Or yeah. Like that sounds that bad, but a boundary is just no, I can't. Sorry, not going to make it. This or that. Thanks for thinking of me. Maybe next time type thing. But not everybody needs full communication and yes. thoroughness. Your, your immediate family, you know, if you have a great relationship with them, they do. Your spouse does. You know, your assistant, people on your team, they need that thoroughness. But other people don't. Ooh. Energy Dang. management, girl. Hold Mike on to dropped. it. So you're a strong advocate for making sure your husband goes before your business. You talk yes, about that all the I time. Yes, I do. I do. And I know for me, I mean, mommy millionaires know that that's mm-hmm. like a struggle for me mm-hmm. because I, it's like workaholic is in my veins. Same, girl. Yeah. And so it's it's like, for me, it seems like second, like, it's just not, it doesn't come natural to mm-hmm. me to put my husband first. Mm-hmm. I have to work every mm-hmm. day on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what would, what advice would you give the mommy millionaires listening in right now that are maybe like they're in that building stage of their right. business and they're so excited, yeah. but they need to continue to put their husbands. Uh, again, it. communication, but also like my husband, we, where we are, it's like, he will call me on it. He'll be like, Hey, you say this and you're not doing this right now. And I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Close the laptop. Yes, sir. What's and going on? And you don't get defensive. And I don't. De- I defensive. Yes, 100%. I want him to be able to call me on it because, quite frankly, he's the one who's going to see it more than I'm or quicker than I'm going to mm-hmm. see it. Remember that whole mirror, yes. uh, body mirror and marriage <laughs> self-reflection yes. 101? And if he, he doesn't say it unless it is like at that point. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? He's not like crying wolf type thing. If he's saying it, then I'm like, oh, you know what? He is right. Like he doesn't abuse it. And so I feel like that's really huge, which again has taken us a lot of like communication and time to get there. But also, you know, like right now where we are so close to launching the app. I mean, these last two or three months have been live in hell. Let's just be (laughs) honest. They have been like, I know like that there's hustle mentality and then there's like rest mentality. And then there's like, our world just has like no work ethic anymore mentality. Like to be quite frank, to be a business owner, there are going to be seasons of hustle that are, that are hard. And that those things have to come before your family. I have not been as present of a mother as I've wanted to be these last two or three months, but that is very short term for the bigger picture and how much more it's going to allow my family. And not only do I think that, but my husband and I communicate that together. So these last two or three months, girl, when we're like, this sucks, but it is just a season. Mm -hmm. You know, now if I, if I carry this past the app launch season, I'm in big trouble. (laughs) I'm in big trouble. I'm called on my stuff. He's calling our therapist. She's calling me in and I'm like, I can't hide anymore. (laughs) That's good. So, you know, I think that a lot of like from what I see online is that he's supportive. I mean, he's in the photo shoots with he you is. guys. Like he's like rocking it. Does it? Mm-hmm. So I know that I know for a fact there's mommy millionaires listening in right now that do not have supportive spouses. What would you say to them? Okay. So the way this broke down for me, my husband and I were dating, and he is three generations, multiple businesses. Like they do real estate, land, farming, cattle trailers, like things that aren't real trendy photo shoot type stuff, if that (laughs) makes sense. Right. It's real, it's real life stuff. Yes. Okay. And then at that time I owned that boutique and it's like, I would take all these pictures and he just didn't get it. Like truly there was a time where Grant and I were just dating and he was like, you schedule work time to take pictures. And I'm like, okay, he's not getting it. So what I did, and clearly if you're married, you can do this because I was just dating. I said, give me your phone. And I was like, I'm going to put my e-commerce app on your phone. 
and you're just going to see the back end. Oh. Big, I knew I was going to marry him, so whatever. He can see <laughs> what money I'm making. <laughs> so I put him on there, and he calls me, and he goes, you know, Randa, when you post those pictures online, all those sales start coming in. And I was like, you think we're just, like, doing this for shits and giggles? <laughs> Yes. So I don't know if that helps anyone listening, but I just put the reality in his own hands to mm-hmm. see it. And then once well, I think that's it. I mean, that's important because you you had the proof in the pudding. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, well, here's why. Yep. What about those women that are like they have the idea, they have the dream and now they're trying to build the community. They're trying to take the photos, but the money hasn't come in. Yet. Hasn't come in yet. I would say communication. And honestly, I just feel like vulnerability is so important. You know, it went from my husband when we were just dating at the time being like, you actually schedule work time for pictures to now I'm like, I won't really do a big photo shoot without him there. He's truly become like my pacifier because he's the one person that'll be like, that angle's bad. Like no one else wants to do that to me. You know, they're like, "Uh, don't tell her that. He'll be like, girl, there is lipstick all over your teeth. Wipe it off. And so I feel like just vulnerability, like I have gotten to the place where before we were at this place, like telling Grant, you make me comfortable with these shoots. You are the mm-hmm. one person who can tell me without me get, getting defensive or losing my mind or, you know, posing, especially in fitness, is so important. Oh, so yeah. if I don't have the right angle or pose or flex, like I could have worked my booty off for that and the camera not even show it yeah. type thing. So I was just like, this is honestly more than I can do myself. Mm, it so really now, is. And he's invested in helping yes. you look your best. Yes. Off. I mean, I'll hand him the camera and he's like, shoulders this way, angle this way, put your Aww. waist back, you know? Then other people come around, they're like, wow. Little cowboy. Yeah. Knows how to help now. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to be kind of coached and trained together, if yeah. that makes sense. So I think it's it's a process. And you said like being vulnerable and like saying, like, this is what I need in the beginning. Like, you know, for the first 12 months, I probably won't see any profit in this business, but here's what I need from you. Yes. And what can I do to help you? And maybe not only that, okay, if I don't see profit in the first 12 months, then I will redirect, re something else. Oh, that's good. Because then Mm -hmm. I feel like that gives this spouse something of like, okay, here's where we're looking at. And if it doesn't keep working, it's not just a pipe dream. We're going to keep doing the same stuff. We're either going to go back to work. We're going to get a corporate job. We're going to start a new business, whatever comes at that time frame, you know, and then maybe that time frame comes and you're not where you want to be yet. And that spouse sees the energy is coming and then they'll decide, Hey, you know, I'm not saying let your spouse run whatever for you type thing. But I also think when I don't know. It's kind of like parenting with toddlers. When you give them a little bit of the power. <laughs> they, or they think they have the power. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when they think they have a little bit of the power, it's less of a power struggle. Oh, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. So what role does your faith play in your marriage? Oh, huge, huge, huge. We prayed it together every night. When it comes to our faith, You know, it's one of those things. We actually kind of have a very different story. So, like, I, born and raised Catholic. Okay. Went to a Catholic school through fourth grade until it shut down. Um, It was the only private school in town. And there was a big layoff at, like, the power plant where everyone worked. So then it had to close. Everyone had to go to public school. So, like, literally taught by nuns, Catholic. And I have nothing bad to say about the Catholic faith. Like, the church I grew up in, wonderful. I love it. But then when I moved, I never found my, my home at the Catholic church where I live now. So I'm non-denominational. And so my husband is now too, but he was also Catholic raised all the time. So we, as different timelines as we have, we both kind of came to the same place, which was really cool that we both were. Well, God had that plan, yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Now try telling the family that you're not getting married in the Catholic church. Oh. Woo, girl. (laughs) Was that another conversation? We did get our sacrament of marriage done in the Catholic Church after our wedding on like a private Sunday with just our most intimate family. That was kind of our compromise, if you will. So again, it was a very uncomfortable conversation to go into. But hey, this is my family that I love so much. And I love the church that I grew up in so much that I want to go back there and I want to get my marriage redeemed there or done there, but that's not going to be the original wedding. I'm yeah, actually going to get married outside of there. You still got what you wanted. 100%. And they did too. It was just a little non-traditional yeah. route. <laughs> so you put so much of your life online. So and much. I mean, it's going really well. I mean, mm-hmm. you have a very engaged community. I mean, you're killing it over there. How do you not let all of that get to your head? 
Great question. And, you know, this is something I wanted to talk about when I saw that um, the email said we, we were maybe going to talk about motherhood and incorporating Christian values. I think when it comes to being a mom, right, you have to practice what you preach mm-hmm. and it all comes down to you. And since I grew up from a very blue collar middle class family and I'm in a much different situation now with raising my child, you know, before we even had my child or our, our child, mm-hmm. <laughs> my husband was raised with a lot more money, but they lived very small in their means. So it wouldn't have seemed like there was that yes, much money. That makes sense. Door, yes, yeah. 100 mm-hmm. percent. So different, but the same. It was like, how are we going to raise this child that has, you know, all of these things that maybe I didn't have growing up and to keep him humble and grateful and just a wonderful Christian man. And it's like you really have to find your worth and value in who you are with Jesus Christ versus what anything on the Internet or any material item or any even money. I mean, it truly comes down to who you are in Jesus Christ. That is your worth and your value and your identity. And I do believe that. I truly do. Like any of this could go away. I'm one of those people. I have to lay my head down at night. And I, you know, whenever I see some people do things, I'm like, I don't know if I could do like, I just can't. I have to lay my head down at night. I know that my God, I feel like he's going to strike me down by lightning (laughs) if I don't do it right. That's called a healthy fear of God. I have the same thing. Yes, I have a healthy fear of God. (laughs) I ain't going to mess up. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, I could do that, but I do not want to die today. Yes. And he'll keep me humble, too. I mean, if I get a little big for my britches, there's some little tug. And I'm like, oh, yes, sir, I hear that. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. so good. I I used to not want that Mm -hmm. in my life, but now I welcome it Mm -hmm. because, yeah. And let me tell you, Luke, like that first business situation, you know, I've heard so many success stories in business. And I think that the thing that can be the worst or best thing for you is for you to fail too soon or you just succeed too soon. Because if you succeed too soon, and basically what I did with my first business, I mean, I... I, I did have a little bit of that clout, if that yeah. makes sense, of I what I built. Yeah. Yes, I can do this. Look what I've done. Mm-hmm. And then when it all starts falling out from underneath you, man, if you aren't already on your knees praying, they're going to catch you. Oh, that's so good. I think that God like wants to show off in your life. Mm-hmm. And so when you're going, I did it, I did it, I, I, gr- you know, I gritted through this, I made it happen, he gets no glory. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he had to bring you to your knees. Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, the type of influence that you have, it is because of God. Oh, you 100%. Know, it's like, because people, there's other people like that are trustworthy online mm-hmm. and put stuff out there, but God has given you favor. 100%. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, so good. So being a mommy millionaire is all about having it all. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that you can. You, you got to you have a team. Yeah, so. you do. <laughs> you got to have a team. You got to have a lot of help around you. <laughs> well, I'm not a multitasker, so I can't do it all at once. <laughs> uh, and it's about, you know, creating generational wealth. Yes. So what are some things that you're doing for Croy, who's mm-hmm. two, which it's crazy because before you know it, he's going to be like my son who's like almost having a change in his voice and going to oh be a man. And it's, it happens so fast. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, my gosh. I'll cry. But, you know, what are you doing to set him up so that way, like, you know, he has a little bit of backing? Do you believe in that? Absolutely. 100 percent. I mean, he had a he had a trust fund before the day he was born. So we had that set up. And then something that my husband and I had actually talked on on my podcast previously about finance is, and I think this can be for anybody, whatever, like, financial status you're in. You know, we created him a credit card before he was born. And so we we use that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's going to have a credit score. And, I, you know, even if you're only spending a little bit on it a month, but you're paying it off in full every month ahead of time. I mean, think of the credit that you can be handing over to your child. That is genius. Even if you don't have any true wealth. Right. That is genius. Because Mm -hmm. when Chase and I got married, we were young, eight, well, 19 and 21, and we had the money to buy Mm -hmm. a house, but we didn't have a credit score because he was stinking young. And his parents had to co-sign for us, actually, Mm -hmm. because, yeah. And I feel like being an entrepreneur, they're even harder on you for those types of things. Oh, yeah. Even if you basically have the whole money to put down. Yeah, they're like, but... Yeah. But we don't know. What's your history? 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's amazing. And do you, I mean, he's two. He's so you two. don't talk to him about money yet. Right. No, no, right? No, no. right. But what are some things maybe that you plan on doing? You know, I think that talking, just talking in general about it and making it not a taboo subject yes. is huge. You know, I Did want you him to. Did you grow up to, that way? It wasn't that we wouldn't talk about money. I didn't understand money at a, there's a lot of money 
level. Right. If that makes you sense. You didn't know so that was available. To I you. didn't know that was available. Me neither. And so now I've truly transitioned into an abundance versus scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. And the first time I told my husband that in therapy, he sat back and you know was like, "What does this mean? What are we going to be, be spending?" And <laughs> no, it doesn't mean we're just going to go blow all of our money and start spending differently than we do right now. It's just a mindset shift. Mm-hmm. It's a we're going to have it. We yeah, have it. always we're, more than enough. Always more than enough. And if we don't, it's going to exist. God's got this, you know, and ultimately, and I've seen you shared this too. Ultimately, it's not our money. It's mm-hmm. God's money type mm-hmm. thing. And so I feel like talking about it with my son, really correlating that to it's not always like there's someone bigger than us who can take away, who mm-hmm. also gives. Mm-hmm. I feel like that is huge. But just talking about it, you know, like my husband was in board meetings of, of companies from the age of five to where he's understanding the way that these these money transitions work. I mean, yeah. they're not passing cash or writing checks in front of each right, other. Right, but he knows the lingo. He's, I mean, he knew what a cap rate was by the time he was 10, and I still can't quite tell you what the hell a cap rate is. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel Aww. like having him in on those meetings, you know, we even have a little picture of Croy. I think he's like 16 months old. He went to the title company with Grant to close on a real estate um, investment property because he's a developer. And Grant signed in his paperwork. And they had a little like juice pouch for Croy and a little notepad and a white Aww. crayon. And they put a little fake paper underneath it and let him sign. So he's like signing with daddy. I feel like just, you know, experience mm-hmm. on top of talking about things is so important. Again, kind of letting them have a little bit of control or power, if that makes sense. Like, not that they really have it, but they think they have it. Yeah, you're expanding their mindset, too. Yes, Yeah. 100%. Oh, wow. That's amazing. All right, so what advice do you have for the mommy millionaires listening in right now that, you know, maybe they have a little bit of some issues around money, you know? And they're like, I want to have it all. I hear Mm -hmm. you guys say you need a team. I can't Mm -hmm. afford a team. It's like they they go into total victim mode. right. Right. What's one of the... Or things? just like looking over the, the ledge. Yes. We're about to fall. It's all going to come crumbling down, all of that. Well, number one, that is scarcity mindset. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to have in your past, but we need to leave it in the past. Oh, that's good. Like, we're done. Close the chapter. Yeah. We know what scarcity mindset is. It's always going to be a good fear of ours. That is great. But it's really, I, I really think shifting into that abundance versus scarcity. Because when you think of being a Christian, you cannot explain the way things happen or come to fruition. You it's can't. Mm-hmm. And I know that's really hard in business to be like, it's going to work out. Yeah. But when you think it is, then you kn- then you know it is, and then you start acting like it is, and it just kind of does. Yes. It's really hard to explain. Well, because you have that perseverance. To someone that's on the outside of it, yes. Right. You have, But you have that perseverance and that grittiness that, like, when one thing goes wrong, you don't go, oh, it's a sign I need to give up. You just right. go, okay, I'm going to go over here. And, like, you just keep yes. going. Yes. Until. And not even, like, I understand, you know, there are some companies that I work with on influencing things. Some are bigger, some are smaller, and I really like to have that relationship with, you know, the managers or the owners, whoever I'm working with. And I can see the difference difference in some of these organization leaders, yeah. if you will. And some, it's like, oh my gosh, we had a slow week. I'm like, it's a week. Like, <sighs> it's a week. That's good. Mm-hmm. You know, like we can't play chicken little on one bad day, one bad week, even one yeah. bad month, because there are, you know, almost every industry has these seasons. Right. Not everyone's killing it all 12 months of the year. Businesses go like this. 100%. Yeah. And so just because it goes down doesn't mean, oh, my gosh, we need to start now thinking and operating on it going downhill. No, we need to think and operate on, hey, we don't have our peak sales, but they are coming back at this month. Therefore, we need to better utilize our time and our energy and our the things that we can control or the things that we can afford during this time. Because yes. now if we're not killing it with sales, well, let's clean up our books. Let's go dive a little deeper into our employee training. Let's see where morale is in the company. Let's do these other things that ultimately they all boost the same goal. Yeah. But it's not just about sales. I love that. And we put so much, especially in the online world, like we put so much emphasis on that number. Right? Maybe I'm saying this because I'm about to launch an app. You know? <laughs> Maybe I'm saying that because I'm ready for my peak. <laughs> well, I think Mommy Millionaires are going to love your app, and we'll definitely make sure to link that up in the show notes. How can everybody find you? I'm on Instagram at Randa Caraba, R-A-N-D-A. So it's like Miranda, but no ma. <laughs> yeah. Caraba. Has, I like that. <laughs> Miranda, but no ma. And then Caraba has two R's and two B's. Okay. And then PowerFit, P-O-W-H-E-R dot F-I-T. And I know that's kind of confusing, but when I was looking for the name, like power.com was like not available and what I would have paid to like have gotten that domain. No, I love the name. And so I'm then obsessed. I start looking at like, okay, if you look at something past dot com, you know, there's like dot org, which is boring. But I was like dot fit. 
So we just call it Power Fit, but the whole website thus far, and that's how we've operated our business, is power.fit. So that's actually the website, which it'll throw people for a loop. Some people are like, power.fit.com. I'm like, no, there is no .com. Right. It's just dot .fit. <laughs> I, I did study that. I loved everything you guys had going on in your website. You had all your empowerment coaches over yes, there. I love yes. that you're circulating the economy, too, how, yes. helping all of these women yes. get more change in their pocket. Yes, awesome. 100%. Well, Today's conversation was amazing. I loved having you on. I love your energy that you bring into the world. And I hope that's what mommy millionaires pick up is that you could see like anything comes at this girl, she's going to handle it. And you want to have that same mentality. And nobody came up and just gave her a permission slip to have that type of energy. You just decided. 100%. And let me tell you what I think is the most energy thing, what really draws people to me that I've noticed at least these past couple of years, it is confidence. Yes. You know, and I, it's not fake confidence. But I love that your confidence is rooted in Christ. One, 100%. You know, even like you talk about money, like I remember, oh my gosh, like I didn't want to post the first house we were building or I didn't want to post things. So people thought like, you know, that mindset of they're going to think I'm making too much money and they aren't going to do, do business with me. No, mm -hmm. that is like victim past mentality. Let's get it gone. People want to see other people that are thriving and in abundance type yes. thing. And you're going to find your right people. So yes. Confidence, confidence, confidence. If you don't have it, let's learn it. Let's talk to ourselves in the mirror. The Oh, gosh, I think of the movie with the Olympics, the bobsled team, Jamaica. Oh, my gosh, cool runnings. Yes, he's like, I am power. Yes. I am whatever with his little lucky golden egg yes. that he keeps. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, go watch that movie. Okay, that is cool all runnings. It. Yes, mommy cool runnings, mommy millionaires. <laughs> and one other thing that I wanted to mention to the mommy millionaires, and you kind of brought it up when you were just talking about using your influence for good, the book of Esther. Oh, I love that. I was okay. I was just talking to a friend about this because um, we can all be Esther's. We can all be Esther's. Oh, my goodness. So tell. OK, we got to talk about that. OK, so Esther is it's where my pastor has recently been been preaching on. And I really wasn't into Esther before Mordecai. I didn't really know any of it. it sounded yeah. cool. Right. But so it's one of it's the one of the only two books in the Bible named after a woman. Mm -hmm. So that's right there. Snaps on me. Mommy Pay attention. Millionaires. Pay attention. <laughs> it's also, I think, one of the only ones that doesn't ever mention God in it. Oh, so that's kind of like a cool spin on it. So it's the story of like this king and he has this this um, queen and he wants to kind of like her to dance and kind of perform for everybody. She d doesn't want to do it. She's out. So then all these other women kind of come to play to like see who's going to be the next his next wife. And she actually is a Jew. And at this, this is like Persian stuff. So like Jews were like no to be out. done with, yeah. like off with their heads type thing. Well, Mordecai was actually her cousin, but they hid it. So it was like a secret thing. So Mordecai kind of hyped her up. She won to become his his wife, but I think she genuinely wanted to be, if that makes sense. So like also the competition of like, I want to win yeah. type thing. <laughs> I'm going to beat all these but other women. The, yeah, I'm going to beat all these other women. <laughs> so then she's in this place of, of power and influence that truly God gave her. Yes. Because she, it wouldn't have happened without Mordecai being in the position that he was in. It wouldn't have happened without like the bravery and the courage to basically fake who you are type yeah, thing. But then there comes, like if you're going to... I understand a little bit of fake it till you make it, but there comes a point where you can't fake it. And so it was coming that, um, God, what was the um, villain's name? Starts with an H. Anyways, he was having dinner. Herod? With the, was it Herod? Yes, Herod. He was going to be having dinner with the king, right? And the night before, the king wanted someone to like read to him. And he was realizing all these great things that Mordecai had done in his life. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to talk to Herod about this. But he never said who it was. He was like, there's this person in my life that has always had my back and he's never been rewarded. What should I do? And Herod thought it was him. So he's like, you need to make him prime minister. <laughs> well, all this is going down for Mordecai type thing. Well, when all this happens, Esther knows that if Herod gets in, they're going to get rid of all the Jews, like off with their heads mm -hmm. type thing. Bad, mm -hmm. bad, bad. So she basically risks her whole life, her whole identity, her whole everything for what was right. Like, mm. this is what is right for the world. And so she goes to the king and says, I've, you know, created this banquet. I want you to come. It's going to be for tomorrow. Will you come? Because even back then, like, even if you were the queen, you could only see the king if he summoned you. So she kind of, like, manipulated him into <laughs> summoning her. Kinda, Influence. Kind of like me with my husband yeah. in skincare. <laughs> <laughs> so she does all this. And basically, she then exposes herself after. And she saves the people of all the Jews. Aww. And basically, if you look into it, like Jesus was a Jew. None of this yes. would have come without the courage of Esther. And she, again, could have risked her. They could have just well, yeah, back said in off that with day, your head. She could have been killed. Been killed, right. 100%. Mm -hmm. But he's, he, he, the king kept saying, like, if you come to me with a genuine request in the concern of God, 
I don't, I don't think they didn't say God because of the book. Like that's why they're saying it's so powerful because God himself is not listed in the in the book. But if you come to me with like concern for the whole royal palace or whatever verbiage they said, then you can have half of the throne. So he kept saying, you're going to get what you want. So I feel like there was a little bit of prep too, saying, hey, you've got this. Maybe mm -hmm. you need that person in your life that's saying, you can come ask for this. Aww. And so she did. She asked, like, I don't want this to happen. And they're really correlating it into kind of like maybe God not being there in kind of where our world is now. Sometimes you feel like God's not there or things are more about like riches and fames and luxuries and only those things. But like the fact that God hasn't finished yet. And yeah, no, he's already, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's preparing us because he's already won the battle. 100%. I love that. No, the story about Esther is that, I mean, all of us can be Esthers because where are we needing to be brave? Where are we needing to be courageous in our lives and put ourselves out there mm -hmm. in that way? Like, and we don't know, mm -hmm. like, what can happen. Right. But we have to have faith. Yes. And that's what it is. And, and like in the Bible, it says the faith the size of a mustard seed. And you have to act on that faith. Yes. I mean... Well, what is Action. it? Is it faith without works is dead, mm -hmm. right? Because you got to have that thing. I can do right. this, and right. then okay, what's the next best step yep. I can take? Yeah. So that's a great way. Yes. I mean, I think for mommy millionaires to leave on that note of just going, okay, what's the next bra brave thing I could do right now? Yes. Right? Well, I loved having you on. I love that we got to talk about all the things. It was God, wonderful. Mom life, <laughs> marriage, uh, therapy, business therapy, oh boundaries. My <laughs> this is a good conversation. So thank you so much Absolutely. for coming on. And if you guys loved this episode, make sure to take a screenshot. Check out her new app that may be out if you're listening to this. If not, just check her out online. I mean, you know, I'm a huge proponent of just always working on your fitness. <laughs> and uh, I know that like her exercises and all the things that she's doing are just absolutely incredible. So like, from one woman to another, I just want to you know honor you and just thank you for all the work that you're doing in the world. Absolutely. You, so as well. you as well. You as well. Forces <laughs> coming together. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.